This is section 4.8 on isosceles and equilateral triangles. An isosceles triangle looks sort of like this. The key features of an isosceles triangle are the two sides that are exactly congruent. And so what I'm doing here is I'm marking these two angles congruent. The two congruent sides are known as the legs. Those are known as the legs. The vertex angle is the angle formed by the two legs. Okay? And so what happens is this. The other side is called the base. And I'm going to say it's the other side beside the le besides the legs. Okay? And so basically what happens is this. This is a leg. This is a leg. And this is the base. Because the two legs are the same. So this is the vertex angle. And the base angles are formed by the base and a leg. And so our base angles in this one are going to be one and two. Okay? So the vertex angle is three, the base angles are one and two. Okay? When we move down to these theorems, we know what we're talking about now when we talk about isosceles triangles. And so the isosceles triangle theorem says this. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite the sides are congruent. And so what I'm given in this picture is this, that AB and AC are congruent. And so the conclusion that I can draw is that angle B is congruent to angle C. Notice the symmetry that happens here when it looks like this. So we have if sides, then angles. The converse would be if angles, then sides. So what I'm given is this. So my conclusion is that ED is congruent to FD. Okay? The proof of this, these two theorems looks something like this. What I'm given is the fact that AB is congruent to AC. Of course, these are segments. So AB is congruent to AC. We want to prove that angle B is congruent to angle C. How do we go about this? Well, first of all, I'm going to outline my statements and reasons. So statements. And it'll look something like this. The first thing that I'm going to say is that I am going to draw X, which is going to be the midpoint of BC. The reason why I can say this is because that every segment has a midpoint. So x is going to be my midpoint here. What that gives me is my next piece is I'm going to draw ax, which is a connecting line right there from a to x. And why can I do this? Because through point through two points
there's one line. Okay, so I can only draw one line. That's the only line that can be drawn. And so when I move on to number three, now I can start saying some things about this. So I can say that bx is congruent to cx because that's the definition of midpoint. So when I come down here, I'm going to mark these congruent. I have to use two marks because I've already said something about these. And so that's my, that's my next piece. The reason why I can say that is because that's the definition of midpoint. Right? It divides it exactly in half, moving right along. I can say by 4 that AB is congruent to AC because that's given. Where am I moving to? I want to be able to say that this angle is congruent to this angle, so B is congruent to C. What I'm hoping to use by dividing this in half is, the, is this fact right here. I have two triangles here, triangle 1 and triangle 2. So I want to show that triangle 1 is congruent to triangle 2, and then use CPCTC to show that these angles are congruent, because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles, if we can prove that they're congruent. And so what I'm going to do next, I already have a side. I have a side here. So what I want to say is, in number 5, I want to say that AX is congruent to AX. Because that's going to be my third side. Of triangle 1, I have one side and two sides. In triangle 2, I have one side and two sides. So I'm going to prove the third side by using side, side, side. So up here, I'm going to use side, side, side. Prove one side. Prove the other side. Third side. Reflexive property of congruence. So in number six, what I can say is this. Now that I have this side congruent to this side, I can say these two triangles are congruent. So triangle A, B, X is congruent to triangle A, C, X. And I'm going to use the side, side, side congruence postulate. Okay? So, because these triangles are congruent, I can mark up the rest of this stuff. I can say that this angle is congruent to this angle. I can say that this angle is congruent to this angle. And I can say that this angle here is congruent to this angle here. So, I can say that, triang that angle B is congruent to angle C. Because, that's C, P, C, T, C. These are congruent triangles, so the parts must be congruent. It's an isosceles triangle, so the base angles are congruent. That's what that proof was all about. Now we're going to use it. In example two, we're going to find the measure of angle C. Well, what I have is this. I know that this triangle is an isosceles triangle. They have given us this. Okay? And the measure of this angle up here is 38. Well, I know that 180 minus 38 is going to give me 142 degrees to work with. Well, since this is an isosceles triangle, I know that this must be x also. So 142 is what's left for those other two angles. And it's going to be equal to this plus this. I divide by 2. I divide by 2. I get 71 is equal to x. Okay? Next one. What they've given me here is this. I've marked them now. They were not marked before, but they are, they are marked. Okay? And this x plus 30 actually goes with this angle right here. How do I do this? Well, I know that because this is an isosceles triangle, angle S is congruent to angle R. Because the base angles are congruent. So what I'm going to say is x plus 30 is equal to 2x. Subtract x from both sides. 30 is equal to x. So the base angles equal 60 degrees. So the measure of angle S is equal to 60 degrees. Okay? It's a pretty simple process. And so when I go down 
and I've got something like this and I'll just go ahead and mark up both of these right now. It's the same kind of process. So if you want to pause and see if you can do these by yourself, that would be awesome. I'm going to keep going right through. Same process here. It doesn't particularly matter. I'm going to add an X in here just to say I don't know what they are. But I know that they're both the same because they're both base angles. Angle G and angle H are congruent base angles. 180 minus 48 is going to give me a total of 132 degrees left over. Okay, So I'm going to divide that by 2. So 2x two is equal to 132. Divide by 2 on both sides, x is equal to 66. So the measure of angle H is 66 degrees. Same deal over here. I know that these are going to be congruent, so angle N is congruent to angle P, not B, P. And so I'm going to say 6Y is equal to 8Y minus 16. So I'll subtract 8Y. So negative 2y is equal to negative 16. I'll divide by negative 2 on both sides. y equals 8. So the measure of angle n is 6 times 8 is 48 degrees. Okay? That's isosceles triangles in a nutshell. Equilateral triangles. Corollaries. If a triangle is equilateral, then it is equiangular. Corollary. If a triangle is equiangular, then it's equilateral. So this is what that means. I have a triangle. This is always going to be true. This is what it looks like right there. And so when I use these properties and I come down here for example 3, example 3 is saying I need to find each value. Well, this is what they've given us. Okay? And they've said that this angle here is 3x plus 15. Well, I know that equilateral means equiangular and all angles are 60 degrees. So if I have one of the angles, it's 3x plus 15, I know that 3x plus 15 is going to be equal to 60 because it's one of the angles. So I subtract 15. 3x is equal to 45. Divide by 3. So x is 15. Okay. Same thing down here. All of these sides are the same, and so if I have two of them that have different measures for whatever reason with variable expressions, I can say 2t plus 1 is equal to 4t minus 8. So I'm going to add 8 and then subtract 2t. So I have 9 is equal to 2t. So I'll divide by 2. and t is equal to 4.5. One last proof here. They want us to prove that a triangle whose, whose vertices are the midpoints of the sides of an isosceles triangle also, is also isosceles. So I need to draw another line in here. And they've given us all this information. And what's happening is triangle ABC is isosceles. So ABC is isosceles. So that means that AB is congruent to AC. And X is the midpoint of AB. And Y is the midpoint of AC. Z is also the midpoint. So all of these are midpoints right here. So I can mark this. Okay. So this is what I've got. And the proof looks something like this. I've drawn this diagram. And I've put in place all of these midpoints of x, y, z, a, b, c. Okay? So let's use the midpoint formula. By the midpoint formula, the coordinates of x the coordinates of x. And so I'm going to use the midpoint between 0 
0 and 2a, 2b. Well, the midpoint formula is Right, so I've got 0 plus 2a over 2, comma, 0 plus 2b over 2. Well, this is going to be equal to a, comma, b. So that's the mid, the distance, or the coordinates of my midpoint. So that's a, comma, b. y is going to be a similar subject. So I'm going to say that's going to be 2a plus 4a over 2, comma, 2b plus 0 over 2. Well, this is going to be 6a, so this is going to be 3a. This is going to be 6a over 2, which is 3a, comma, b. Okay, so this is 3a, comma, b. Why does this matter? Well, we want to prove that z, y, is congruent to zx. Okay, so the coordinates of z are going to look like this. So this is x, y, we'll do z down here. z is going to be this, midpoint of 0 plus 4a over 2, comma, 0 plus 0 over 2. So the coordinates are going to be equal to 4a over 2, which is 2a, comma, 0. And it makes sense because this is on the y-axis, or on the x-axis. y is 0 on the x-axis. Okay? So now, the distances. xz is going to be equal to, now, distance formula. We need to remember the distance formula. It's going to be square root of 2a minus a squared plus 0 minus b squared. Because xz is this po these points here. So I've got x2 minus x1 over or plus y2 minus y1 squared. Let's look at this. So this is a squared plus b squared. Negative b squared. So that's going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay? That's the distance there. It doesn't matter that it's that it's letters. Okay? So now I need to find the, the length of yz. So y is here. So I'm going to have 3a minus 2a squared plus b minus 0 squared. And this is going to be a squared plus b squared square root of that. It might have seemed confusing, but we use the midpoint formula to find the distance or the coordinates of this. We use the midpoint formula to find the coordinates of this, midpoint formula to find the coordinates of this, and then what we did was we used those midpoints to find the lengths of these two sides. Well, what we said is this is congruent to this by distance formula right here. Okay, So these two things are congruent. That's good for us because that means it's an isosceles triangle. That allows us to say that this angle is congruent to this angle, this angle is congruent to this angle. It allows us to say a lot of different things. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Make sure you're writing down any notes or any questions that you have on the notes in the margins. We'll see you next time.